What's up, TRC fans? Don't miss our new event, King of the Open Road. Join the TRC team for an epic drag and drive experience you'll never forget. Coder features a scenic cruise, drag racing, and a car show. We'll see you out on the open road. Hey, what's up? My name is David No. I own and drive this 1989 Honda Civic that I call La Mahulsa. Okay, so I got this car behind me here when I was a teenager. It was just my daily driver to get back and forth to school. I was um, just driving it and then decided to do a swap on it. So I put a B20 VTEC in it and I was having fun with that. And then, you know, somewhere along the lines, you know, teenager thing, lost my license and uh, decided that, you know, since I can't drive, I'm gonna build the car. And um, that's kind of where things kind of took off. I decided to pull out the, like the B20 VTEC and go turbo with it. And from there, um, you know, it, it became a car that I raced on test and tunes on like Fridays and Saturdays. And after that, unfortunately, I was getting ready to do a grudge race with the, a local kid. As dumb as it sounds, you know, there's that Honda Volkswagen rivalry. So of course I was trying to get the car ready to um, go race him. And um, that's when I had uh, an accident with the car. I actually got burned working on the car when I was uh, changing one of the fuel pumps. Long story short, I got, I got, you know, I got burned with the car and um, that kind of set me back, you know, it kind of made me reevaluate life a little bit, but um, obviously I made it through and um, I attribute that to, you know, me continuing to still race the car. Because to me, like I had the accident, it was unfortunate. And, you know, obviously I have scars for life from it, but I chose not to let that change my life and who I was. So I use that as motivation to continue to build the car. And it went from a test and tune car to, you know, going to race 1050 index and then 950 index. And honestly, I suck at racing index. So here we are, heads up racing, like sport front wheel drive, X front wheel drive. And, um, yeah, now I have, I don't know, I have the car behind me that, you know, holds the EF record and um, has been winning events. My friend Andrew Fernandez had a CRX that held the record with uh, an 830. And I had gone to World Cup, ran an 860 with more on the table. I knew we weren't really leaning on it yet. So that's when I decided to make it my new goal to take the EF record. And um, from there, I went to Bradenton and um, we ended up going 829, which is, you know, not anything crazy, but you know, I still, I still took the record at that time. new personal best for David. So then fast forward, I, I qualify for World Cup the following year and um, I get there and I go through a couple rounds of um, qualifying and um, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to, to run on in the show on Sunday. So in the show on Sunday, first round I have uh, Mike Manley's car, which is, um, you know, primarily built by like Ramy Racing who's, you know, no stranger to going sevens. And uh, me and him have a conversation before the pass. Um, we wanna, you know, make clean, safe passes. And I know his car went sevens before, and uh, I told him it would be extremely cool if we went side-by-side -side sevens. And I knew, I knew it was possible because in qualifying, I went eight O's, so I was like right there. So, you know, I said, I said to him, if you go sevens and I'm right there with you, then I think I'm gonna go sevens. Oh, yeah. Wow! In my mind, I thought it was possible, but obviously there's been plenty of people before me that I think are highly capable. They know what they're doing. And um, for me to go sevens, like the first ones to the sevens, that was that was huge. Like it was the first time the, the EF chassis had gone sevens. And like the, the whole vibe, just going back to my pit, it seemed like I, I was, I was, I had done something like spectacular. Like I thought at that moment, I could have actually already won World Cup just with how, um, you know, everybody's energy was because 
everyone knows how hard it is to make this chassis work. So following World Cup finals, you know, I'm thinking it's gonna be a nice easy winter where I can just kind of like relax a little bit. You know, World Cup takes a lot out of you. And uh, of course then uh, Victor, who's the owner of Bradington, um, he goes to PRI and he meets up with Wes from Drag Illustrated and together they come up with um, this um, extreme front wheel drive challenge that they are including with the World Series of Pro Mod. So the whole deal with this is it was an invitation only race where 25 of the baddest racers get invited and they kind of wanted to put X front wheel drive on the grand stage. They wanted to put it on TV, um, on CBS Sports and um, I was lucky enough to get invited um, to this race. Since this, this race was such a big deal, you know, it was a great opportunity. I decided that I would pull the engine that was that was in the car already, that was running, you know, really good. It just had gone sevens and um, just needed like a quick little refresh, some valves or whatever, and I was gonna be ready to go. But I decided I'm gonna put a whole new long block because I mean, this is, this is a stage that I, like I've never been on before, you know? World Cup is one thing, but this is a whole different, a whole different thing. So I came down here uh, with, you know, basically a brand new setup. And um, first round qualifier, I went out and first, second gear felt great. I clicked third gear and unfortunately I, you know, lost a motor. <laughs> So that wasn't, that wasn't exactly in my plans. The last one lasted like extremely long time. And then this one just grenaded first pass. So I worked all day, um, Friday into Saturday. Um, actually ended up not being able to make one of the qualifiers um, due to, you know, just, just timing and stuff. Um, and um, from there, so we only had four uh, qualifier scheduled, right? So the first one, obviously I blew up, that's not good. The second one I didn't make. And then the third one, the track was, you know, the track was tricky. I mean, the first pass, the track was, you know, something that I was very familiar with. You know, I, like I said, I was able to go first and second, no problem. And then uh, third, the third round qualifier, the track tightened up a lot and uh, I ended up bogging. <laughs> So I just, you know, drove the car down the track. Thankfully, Q4 comes around, you know, I know the track is good now. Q3 kind of woke me up on what the track can handle. And uh, luckily my tuner, you know what I mean? Me and him were on the same page. Um, and Rolla was able to, you know, put a tune up in it. Um, and Q4, I ended up, you know, going sevens. <laughs> So I, I back up another seven second pass and I've done a couple by now, but you know, it's, it's always good to, to go to a different track and be able to run another seven. So after I went the, the seven nine, that put me um, seven out of 16. So I just went from, I think it was 23 or 24. Like I was actually in a very, very bad spot. And uh, to be able to make that jump to go to number seven qualifier, you know, I was extremely happy, but the qualifying like number doesn't really matter because at this event, it's just the top 16 cars and you do a chip draw. So, you know, we wait for the whole event to be over basically at the end of the night and then we go to uh, do the chip draw. And, um, you know, lucky, maybe unlucky, I don't know how you want to take it, but, you know, I, I pull uh, Miss PSI, which me and, me and her at one of the World Cups that I mentioned before, uh, we ran and I had some issues. So. Again, kind of some unfinished business. Like, you know, I don't like to leave a race on like, you know, where we both don't have clean passes. So, you know, on, on one aspect, I was extremely excited to race her. On another one, last qualifier, when I went seven, she also went sevens and she went a 778, which made her actually number one qualifier. <laughs> Nicole. 
So yes, I'm excited to race her, but also I'm like, man, I just did all this work and yet I have to race number one qualifier. Like, all right, elimination round one comes up. And of course, you know, my thing is, is I mean, racing, we all do this for fun, right? I mean, there's, there's people that got businesses involved and everything like that, but at the end of the day, we all just do this for fun and we all just wanna make clean passes and just be safe. So of course, before the race, you know, I tell her, you know, let's have a, a clean, safe pass. And um, we go ahead and, you know, we suit up, we get ready. Um, we both do our burnouts, we go to staging. And, you know, I stage the car, she stages the car. And when I dumped the clutch, I swear, I was like, I either just red lit or I really just left on her because I looked over and I did not see her even move yet. And after that, I mean, I made the pass all the way down. I saw the wind light and I was, I was super pumped because I just went from, to me, not even being in the race to, you know, going number seven qualifier and then just taking out number one qualifier. So at this point, I'm thinking this race is mine. Like there's no way, you know, things aren't gonna go my way. So after just beating Miss PSI, we're down to eight cars. So then they do a chip draw again. Every round gets a chip draw and I happen to draw Ray Rios. So Ray's no, no slouch in the game, you know, he's a veteran in the game. And uh, me and him both line up and fortunate enough for me, I also turn on the wind light again. So then I go to um, the following round, you know, we're down to the final four and uh, I get um, Jason Bello, which, you know, he's, he's young like me and uh, he's a good driver and, you know, he's got a fast car. So, you know, I got my work cut out for me. And um, once again, I pull it off. So At this point, I mean, I'm down to the finals and I'm thinking this race is definitely mine because I just went through all that work and I mean, everything's just falling in place. So then now I'm in, I'm in the finals and uh, there's no chip draw obviously because there's only two cars left. So I know I'm racing uh, Rafa, which, you know, he has a very fast, consistent car that, you know, really does well at most events that he goes to. So, you know, we go ahead, we go up there. We both had to do a little bit of work on the cars in between. And um, we go up and, you know, we do everything like normal. You know, I do the burnout, he does the burnout and um, we go stage the cars. And crazy enough for me, I mean, you know, I, I pre-stage the car, stage the car and I'm there, you know, just sitting, waiting, you know, on the two-step and... <laughs> I see that he gets a red light. So, I mean, just like that, I, I don't know, this is the craziest feeling ever. I didn't even know what to do. Like, part of me was like, okay, I just won. But then another part of me was like, I'm, I should just still dump the clutch and make a pass. And <laughs> I really didn't know, like my brain doesn't work. I mean, it works pretty fast, but not quite that fast. Like I was like, did I really just win 20 grand like that? Like, did he really just, you know, mess up on the tree? And then, you know, that was me. But so I dumped the clutch and, um, you know, unfortunately, um, the motor that I had put in was actually my my old motor, I call it Old Faithful. And, you know, that motor has put me in the sevens, I think at like three different, three different tracks, I think three different times. 
and you know it really doesn't owe me anything like you know i end up you know going first gear and when i click second you know the rod came out and <laughs> You know, here we are again, but you know, then I'm going through my, I'm going through, I was like, I don't know. Like, I know I just got the wind light, but like, did I really win? Because I've never really been in a situation. So of course then I'm like coasted it. Like I still have some speed. I'm thinking I have to like go past the beams for it to count. So the car finally slows down and I just don't have enough to, to make it to the end. So here I'm like freaking out. I'm like, uh, did I win? Did I not win? I was like, I should just cross the line just to make sure. So I'm like on the side of the track it's slowing down i'm over here hitting the starter just trying to make it like the starter basically i'm like running an electric motor at this point like there's there's nothing going on but the starter and uh i end up crossing you know and um you know obviously the track officials come down and everything like that but um in the meantime since the car wasn't running i could hear what's going on and i hear over the announcement that you know, I had just won. And I was like, I, I really was like kind of speechless. I didn't really know if this was like real or not, but you know, from what I heard, I had won. Um, and of course then um, the track guys push me off the track and my crew comes down to pick me up. And they're just like, they're just ecstatic because I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I just did it, I, which I was happy to just be in the, the top 16. So <laughs> to go from top 16 to winning the whole thing, I mean, I don't know words. I usually don't like not have words for how I feel, but I just, I, I still don't know what exactly happened. About the car. I mean, it's just a basic, you know, B series, uh, X front wheel drive setup. Um, all the turbo stuff is made by Neverlift. Um, Autofab is one of my buddies who does, you know, beautiful work. Uh, combined with that is a 73.9 turbo from Apex and um, the engine work is done by GSP machining. Um, all this put together is controlled by a FuelTech FT550 tuned by Rollo Tuning um, out of Harrisburg. Um, all that said and done, it probably makes upwards of 14, 1500 horsepower, um, enough to put me in the sevens. Um, the transmission is a is a dog box. I either run a PPG or a BF gear set, depending on, you know, what's broken and what's not. <laughs> um, in conclusion, I'd like to thank all the people that helped me out. Um, I wouldn't be able to do this with, you know, all the people that helped me out from Fuel Tech. I mean, they, they basically become a uh, family to me. Um, obviously my tuner, like I said, Rolla Tuning, Javier on the wire harness, um, GSP, like I said, on the machine work. Um, uh, Action Clutch, you know, they, they always help me out. They make sure, you know, I'm able to make it down the track. You know, I'm able to put the power to the to the ground and not, you know, be spinning the, the, the clutch or whatever. Other than that, you know, I have like a couple companies helping me out, like Arius Pistons. Um, those are the pistons that I run in my car. Um, but other than that, really, it's my friends, you know, that put, put up with, you know, me at the racetrack. I'm gonna be honest, I mean, it's pretty stressful, you know, it's like drag racing, one of the things where you can only get it right like one time. Um, and you know, that that's like a major thing. Like you can't just like, you know, have like a redo. So it's, it's kind of stressful, um, but you know, they're great. They put up with me, of course, my family, you know, it's crazy to think like what I do and you know, the hobby I chose, but you know, this is what I like to do. So I like to thank them. And uh, basically everyone that, you know, shows support, you know, it could be, you know, people on social media just reach out to me. You know, I appreciate everyone that, you know, says nice things or even the people that don't because, you know, at the end of the day, it makes me faster. So, thanks. So a question that I'm often asked and it's it's pretty funny because every time I'm at the racetrack, people are always thinking, you know, I'm, I'm in the car, I'm strapped in the car and people are just walking by like, oh, that's a wrap. And, or I'll get the question like, can I touch it? Is it real rust? And I mean, it's honestly pretty stupid, but you know, like I said, like there's reasons behind me racing this specific car. And the reason why it's rusted is because that whole Honda Volkswagen rivalry, like, you know, like that's a style with Volkswagens to have like the rusted hood and stuff like that. And, you know, I kind of took it overboard and just rusted the whole car. But um, then I ended up dumping a ridiculous amount of money into the car that's rusted that, you know, well, I'll never sell, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, yeah, it's real rust. It's not a wrap and, uh, Eventually it will just rot away into nothing. <laughs>